I've never been one for uh, a lot of editing. So we'll see how it goes. One of these days, maybe I can hire somebody and say, hey, edit all these things for me. Make them look pretty. Totally. Look Make fancy, it awesome. Right? So, all right, everybody. I'm Coach Bronson, and I am a pleasure to have Leanne Vogel on. Leanne has had me on her program a couple of times over the past couple of years. And not, have you ever been? I don't think you've ever had it ever come on this side. I don't think so. It's about oh time. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It took so long. No, um, fine. <laughs> you tell us a little bit about yourself. So any, anybody that doesn't know you or hasn't followed you or heard, even heard your name, I can't imagine who that could be, um, knows a little bit about you. Okay. So my name is Leanne Vogel. I'm originally Canadian. I studied nutrition in 2008 after having an eating disorder. And I stumbled on the ketogenic diet in 2014 when I was struggling with amenorrhea, which is a lack of period. And every doctor said, I would never be able to get a period. And so I used the ketogenic diet to get my period back to start ovulating. And now it's been, what is, what are we now at? Like almost 10 years of having wow. a cycle and um, yeah, using the ketogenic diet. And so now I educate women on how to um, advocate for themselves, how to understand sure. their blood work, what diet to choose and how to balance their macros right for them. I've never been one to completely align with one thing and say, this is, this is the only way it has to be for everybody. And so the yeah. keto worked for me for a very large season and helped me get my period back. Now that I'm developing muscle and working toward that, I find I don't need to be as low carb and high fat. And so I'm constantly learning and evolving and um, just really paying attention to my body and what it needs. So that's kind of a little bit about me and yeah. what I do. Remember that you said that a little bit of paying attention to your body and what it needs, because I actually had somebody, I, I made a comment in one of my videos online recently where I talked about it's everybody's different and what your body needs is going to be, is going to dictate. And I think some people hear that and they think where it's a woo woo thing, like, how do I feel? And, and, and I, I we, we'll touch on this, I think, but there is a measurable and quantifiable way to determine what your body needs and how things are working for you. It's not just how you feel. I think a lot of people don't make that. Yes. And I use blood work. So yeah. I use functional blood chemistry to understand that perspective, as well mm -hmm. as a bunch of different data points like my HRV, my pulse, sleep, um, my training, all of those pieces. I'm a data driven right. individual. And so um, we're not going off of the woo woo feelings. Oh. We're going off of how we're performing. And blood work is a big part of that. I'm stealing something from what you just said. Okay. We hear science based all the time. And I think science based and evidence based are two competing terms that people throw back and forth in, out there in, in the ether, right? I don't hear anybody in health and fitness talking about data driven. I, well, my past life, is, I was a data analyst. So I guess yes, that makes sense. <laughs> but that's, that's what this, that's a huge part of this. It's about what's actually happening and how you adjust from what you're seeing actually happen. So the evidence is part of it, but the data and what the data is telling you is a whole nother, oh boy, we're going to go. And it changes. Okay. So like the diet yes. and lifestyle and everything that I did 15 years ago to get my period back is completely not what I need to do now that I want to build muscle and be like, yes. it, it changes as with yes. our goals and as we're healing and what we need now isn't going to work for us in 10 years. And I think that's where a lot of people get hung up is, well, it worked for me five years ago. If I can just get back to what I was doing five years ago, it'll work. And it's like, you're a completely different person. And so that needs to play a factor too. Yes. A hundred percent. You're giving away all the, you're giving away all the secrets. This is, this is on my list of things to talk about, but we're, okay. I love, I love synergy though, because this is what happens with a lot of the people in the space that, that I've connected with. I think you're one of the people, there's a couple of the people in the space where we just are on such as the same wavelength about things that when we start talking, I feel like I feel like I'm hearing myself talk when you talk. So this is good. I like it. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't, we're saying the same things because we are coming from different perspectives. I've never had a mentoria. It's not something I can speak to, right? <laughs> it's not a we would problem hope not. For me. Yeah. <laughs> right. So my experience of what I'm doing and the, the things that I have in my life that I've gone through are going to be very different than yours. But the fact that we've come to a lot of the same conclusions about how to determine what works and what doesn't work 
I think that's a super, a super big thing for people to realize. Before we get into all those little details, what does, with your background and where you're coming from, where you were versus where you are now, what does it mean to you to be confident in your body? Confidence, it's really something that um, is so individual. I think confidence in the past had to do with how I looked physically mm -hmm. and how, kind of how everyone else saw me. But I think now a confidence is more a trust in my body than Ooh, anything. I and I feel yeah. confident, you know, if I, if I wear my aura ring, you know, that gives me data about my HRV and my sleep. And if I sleep better, then I'm like, okay, I got this down and I'm feeling more confident about where my sleep is at. And I think, I think for me, it's a lot to do with the trust that I have for myself internally now mm -hmm. versus externally previously, because okay. we're going to age and we're going to look different in our twenties yeah. versus forties. And I'm kind of edging up to that number. And so I'm not going to look the same and it's going to look different. And I think mm -hmm. for me, the confidence was previously all about physical. And I think we can get wrapped up in that very easily. Yeah. And so my confidence needs to come from an internal place as opposed to an external place. Cause I'll go, I'll go crazy if I focus on the external. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Um, does that, does that, what, how you define confidence now versus how you did then, does that also change with your goals and what you're doing or what you're able to do or the things that you're trying to accomplish have those changed as well? I would say, yes. I think also um, becoming a believer um, in Jesus has changed mm. kind of everything for me of just this firm trust in not myself. And mm, so okay. um, previously I kind of relied, I had that self-reliance and a, a firm belief that I could do it. And I think also too, a big transition over the years has been a firm belief that I don't have it all together. And that, what? Um, what? I'm a total mess and so is everybody else. And so I think too, just how we're applying ourselves, I find myself as I get older, taking more time to think over things. I find I'm more mm, patient yeah. with items that I wouldn't previously. I think confidence is challenged when we want something and we want it right now we're not getting it and therefore we have lack of confidence in what we're doing we are changing our macros every other day because it's not working we're changing our sleep strategies our biohacking like so i think now the confidence is like in the long term shifts that i'm okay. experiencing and being patient yeah. toward those yeah. and knowing that even though it's not working as quickly as I want it to, a, a really good example is my pull-ups. I've been working on these things consistently every other day for a year. And I would say that, yes, I've advanced a little bit, but I'm probably nowhere close to actually doing a pull-up. But if I look at over the last year and my first, very first pull-up, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's definitely better. You know, I've, I've definitely grown strength, but I think that confidence too in the patience game is, is what I've seen yeah. the most and just taking my time, not freaking out, mm -hmm. you know, dialing in and then just sitting there and being with the plan. Yeah. Cause I didn't okay. do that previously. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying that the, what, how you define confidence in your body used to be external. Then it moved to internal. What are the things that you look at to determine your confidence? You mentioned your HRV, your sleep, are there any other things? Like what are the things that you look at to say, yeah, things are going well. I can trust that my body can blank. Yeah. Okay. So I have a CGM on. That's one. Okay. Um, yeah. Of just like, oftentimes, if I do track my food, I'm kind of like checking to see how my body is responding to those foods. Right before this interview, actually, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what I did post workout to cause me to go a little bit too low in my glucose. And so I need to kind of go back after this call and be like, okay, what did I choose that made me go a little bit low because I needed a snack before I got on today, which is very mm. not like me. And yeah. so I need to assess, was it stress? You know, I just moved. There was a lot going on. Could it have been the stress of getting back to a workout and not being properly fueled? And so I think it's just also just sitting with that and kind of assessing 
glucose markers. I use HRV. I use resting pulse. I test my blood work um, every three months or so using functional blood chemistry and looking at that. Um, and then also just um, day to day, like, where's my cycle at? Have I ovulated? And I think this can, this sounds super overwhelming, but once you kind of get into the groove, it's sort of like cleaning a house. I, I yeah. got into the groove of having a cleaning schedule for my home. And at first I thought it was ridiculous. Why would you have a schedule to clean your house? But it means that every day I clean for 20 minutes and every week my house is perfectly clean. And so I think the same thing goes for how we manage our bodies. If we have just a couple checklists that we're doing every day, uh, step counting is another big part of it. I find that if I walk about an hour and a half to two hours a day, I feel best, I sleep best. And so I track my steps so that I know that when I'm low by the end of the day, I just go for a quick walk, like mm -hmm. those sorts of things. I think those are kind of the main uh, data points that I can yeah. think of. So that's what you're doing. How about what, wh how has your life changed? So you've, you've changed what you're doing. You've changed your habits. You've done these different things to improve your confidence and knowing that you're doing the things you need to do to get where you want to go. Where does that change or where does that, the rubber meet the road when you're doing all these things and how does it change your actual life? Right. You know, I talk about quality of life all the time is this, that I'm the fitness guy, but I don't care if you have a six pack or not. It's about what can you do in, in the real world? How does how do you see that affecting where you were looking at trying to look good before? Did that have an impact? Did, did looking good impact your ability to live your life? Or does <laughs> yeah, I had other hypo stuff, right? hypoglycemia and uh, amenorrhea and I didn't sleep. And I mean, it, it wasn't working for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it really wasn't working for me. Um, I wasn't sleeping. I was uh, addicted to cigarettes. I was drinking mm -hmm. a ton of diet Coke just to stay awake. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that to now, um, it's completely different. I think too, a big issue that I see is the lack of confidence in what you're doing because you just heard a podcast and somebody said, take X, Y, Z supplement or change your macros to have yeah. 200 grams of protein and you're just doing it and you don't know why. And so oh. every week, Yes. You listen to another podcast and you're doing another thing. And so now, because I know myself and I know how I'm reacting, and yes, it does help that, I mean, I'm a professional in this space and this is what I do for a living for people, for sure. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. just, I dial it in and I stay there. Like I make a workout program for myself and I camp there for eight to 12 weeks before I change it. Even if I'm like, I don't know, is this activating my glutes enough? Or did I put enough bicep in it? Like maybe I'll make little tweaks. But other than that, I'm like, focus. The focus yes. here is I'm working on pull-ups. Everything that I'm doing for the next eight to 12 weeks is going to be to build the muscles related to pull-ups. And yes. so having okay. that confidence in the goals that you're making and trying not to get kind of wishy-washy of, well, this person said to do this and this person said to do this and maybe I'll just add in an extra thing here. No, focus. And I think that makes your life a lot simpler. Like there's really not much to my life right now. Like I, I wake up, mm -hmm. I brush my teeth, I go for a walk, I work, I work out, I come home, I eat some, you know, like th it's just... Yeah. You're just going through the motions and you don't have to like be frazzled about the next greatest. Right, you don't have to speak. Oh, okay. Well, I, when can I fit in the sauna? Oh, I got to make sure I get the cold bath and oh, wait a second. Hold on a second. I got to do the red light therapy before I go to bed. And oh crap, where are my blue light blockers? At? Uh, ah, right. <laughs> like, good grief people. <laughs> Although I do really love my basics. I love my castor oil pack. I, I rotate between castor oil pack and my little sauna, but living in Florida, I sweat like enough that I yeah. don't really use yeah. my sauna. <laughs> yeah. And again, there's nothing wrong with any of those things. I think all of those things have a place. Um, what I see a lot of people doing is they start doing those things before they're, they have, before they've stopped drinking Diet Coke. Yeah. Right? Or, you know, they start doing all those things and they're still doing it. It's like you see these posts of people who during COVID were, wearing masks and their shopping carts were full of Fruit Loops. You know, it's like, where's the priority here? What are you guys doing? You know? Yeah. I think it comes from a place of lack of education. And mm -hmm. I think that like 
if we're just spazzing out and listening to every single podcast, watching every single video and just trying to consume content without a goal in mind, it becomes really mm -hmm. easy to just be tossed around with whatever the hot topic is at the moment. Like I know if somebody says, Leanne, carnivore is the best thing you need to try it. I'm like, that's not going to work for me, but it's yeah. so good. And, but no, I, I can tell you right now, I'm really happy for you, but like carnivore is not going to work for me, you know? So you have sure. that confidence to know sure. and that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Now let's talk about that a little bit. How do you you have clients, you're a coach, you have a lot of people you've worked with over the years. Yeah. Um, how do you look at, oh, it's not, I'm not going to say, how do you look at, if you were to look at all the people you worked with over the years and you had to say that regardless of the specific things you are telling people based on their individuality, what are the common threads that you could pull for most of the people you've worked with that if they just did these two or three things, or thought about things in this one or two different ways would completely change their lives, whether they followed a specific diet or not. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. I'm thinking probably patterns wise, I talk about water quality with absolutely every single client that I talk with. There's not one client that I'm not bringing up water quality unless they're drinking perfect water. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. well done, water quality for the win. <laughs> um, so I, I really, 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 really love distilled water and reverse osmosis water, either or. Mm -hmm. I find distilled to be more of a natural process in reverse osmosis um, and then you remineralize it. So I'm constantly talking about water quality. If you are drinking filtered water from your fridge, tap water, anything else other than those things, mm -hmm. it's probably not ideal. Um, Kangen water is obviously fantastic, but is quite pricey. Um, but water quality, always. Food okay. quality, always. I don't care necessarily what diet you choose. I think that there's a layer of, there's a lot of people that say, no, 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 I really want to do keto. And I'm like, you're a slow oxidizer. Your thyroid is super slow. Your adrenals are super slow. You're not going to respond well to a ketogenic diet right now. So let's get your thyroid better. Let's get your adrenals better. And then 100% let's do keto. So there are those nuance pieces, but overall, regardless of what diet you choose or structure mm -hmm. that we choose around your diet, food quality is a big piece, whatever. How, how do you work that on a spectrum of somebody? Let's say you have somebody who's, who's work, you know, so food, if food quality is the concept. I, I don't want people to think that you're saying no matter what you're doing, you have to go spend the most amount of most money as possible on the best quality food. Right. And I think you're talking about a spectrum. If you're down here on the spectrum and you're eating McDonald's every day, then yeah. Going to whole, going to Walmart even and just buying the tube the tube ground beef and yeah. eggs and bacon every day is going to be a better step up whether it's grass fed or not right it's it's, totally. it's about that that progression right yes right now um, we are financially tight and I had to stop buying grass fed grass finished beef pasture raised pork and I am just going to Costco and getting what we can afford. And yeah. that's okay. That's better than me saying, ah, well, screw it. If I can't have the best stuff, I'm just going to eat <laughs> McDonald's. Like yes. that's not, that's not what we want to do. So quality, water quality is on a spectrum. Food quality is on a spectrum to where you're coming yeah. from. If you're drinking tap water, getting a Brita is going to be better. If you're yes. drinking a Brita, getting a Berkey is probably going to be better. If you're drinking a Berkey, getting distilled or reverse osmosis water is probably going to be better or maybe even spring water. So there's a progression. Mm -hmm. The same yeah. thing with food quality. If you can afford organic sometimes and the dirty dozen clean 15 is a great option. If you can afford local and maybe even local is cheaper and you're eating more seasonally, that's even better. And so it's this constant evolution of what you can afford, what resources you have and the time that you can spend. I know mm -hmm. that some people, if it's a matter of, if I don't get some sort of food prep box, I'm going to end up at the Chick-fil-A drive through at 2 PM on a Thursday, <laughs> then get the, get the, get the frozen meal, get, get whatever you right. need. That's just a little bit better. And then why are you not going on Chick Fil A? Why are you not going on Chick Fil A? Have you? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm one of those people that doesn't like Chick Fil A. Uh, what? 
I don't oh like my, it. Really? Wow. So when I did fast food, that was definitely on the list. But I'm sorry. I the fries are <laughs> soggy. I, the I, fries, no. The fries, it was just the chicken nuggets. Like I I there have I have been known in the past to eat a I won't say a whole platter, but a good portion of a large chicken nugget platter of Chick-fil-A, yes. Um, I, well, it's funny because they're like grilled chicken nuggets or 50 plus ingredients. Like you oh, would think horrible. that they would just use chicken. chicken. Right. <laughs> so, and I mean, if you really look at that, um, I just went grocery shopping and got enough food for two people for the week. It was $50. And I was like, if we go out to eat, that's one meal just down right. like that. And I can yep. do an entire week's worth for two people for $50. So yeah. I think that the, the the quality is on a spectrum for both water and food. I think air quality, too, is something we don't think about. Um, mm. And I probably speak to 95% of my clients on the air quality piece of being conscious of the quality of the air in your home and the quality that mm -hmm. you're breathing. We breathe mm -hmm. in 20,000 liters of air per day and none of us are thinking about. about what, yeah, that's true. What, I, what we're breathing in. I never, and, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So those three things, water, okay. food, and so air quality. What I'm hearing is if we, if we brought that into like an umbrella concept, I would, I would that sounds like environmental quality, right? Environmental control controlling what's around you, controlling what you're putting into your body, controlling those those factors and trying to surround yourself and provide your body with the best things possible. Knowing it's well, not going to be perfect. Right yeah. And you just do your best. But knowledge yeah. is power. And there's going to be things within that that are custom. Like yeah. if your home is brand new and hasn't had any water damage, it's going to look different than a home that's built in 1940s that's lived through a couple hurricanes. You're going to have different requirements for air quality controls. If you have a bunch of people living in your house, the CO2 is going to be higher. So there's yep. all these factors. But I think overall, um, yeah, it's really about underst understanding your environment and learning how to support it as much as possible to support that's your, awesome. your body. Yeah, that's awesome. I think, and if people will look at it from that perspective, that takes some of the confusion of, well, I need this specific kind of meat, or I need this, this, I need this, whatever it may be. Um, or, you know, even you said this, this specific, I need reverse osmosis water. Well, maybe you don't need reverse osmosis water right now. Maybe you need that Brita right now. Maybe yeah. for you, that's that step up you need. So you don't have to overthink. You don't have to overplan, make it complicated, stress out because you can't afford something yet. Just it makes it approachable because if you're meeting the, the concept, the concept is improve your environment. OK, how can I do that for what it, wherever I'm at? It makes the decisions and your options a lot more attainable because you're not trying to reach some thing that some doctor online said, this is what you need to solve all your problems in your life. And I think, too, what can you be consistent with? Ooh, hit it. Keep going. Like if, if you can only be consistent with eating, you know whatever, like grass fed, grass finished beef every day is unattainable. Don't even go there. Like if you know that you can't afford it, or if you know that you don't have access to it, then don't set yourself up for failure. I cannot even tell you how many clients I work with. And I've done this time and time and time again. I did this with my Bible reading last week. I was like, well, I'm three days behind. So like, I may as well just like start the month over or like do it next year. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Leanne, right? yes. what is wrong yes. with you? No, you have 10 minutes right now. You're not going to get through a whole day worth of reading, but just like sit down and get it done. And we do the same thing with workouts. We do the same thing with food. Well, if I can't do it, then I'm not going to do it at all. If I can't make three perfect meals every night, well, then I'm not even going to bother. You know, mm -hmm. start with something attainable. Maybe for you, it's I'm going to prepare one meal from home a week. And I know that I can make that happen. Great. Yes. Or I know that I can walk five minutes every other day in the morning before we work. Awesome. If you push it to 20 minutes and you know that you probably can't attain that, all you're going to do is set yourself up for failure and you're going to lack trust in yourself to make goals. Ooh. And so it's really important that you learn that I'm a trustworthy person 
for myself, I can set goals. I can attain them. It's the, it's the same with your relationship with your significant other. If they're constantly saying, yeah, 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 I'll do that. Yeah, 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 I'll do that. And they don't, you lose trust in them. It's the exact same thing with yourself. If you're constantly right. like, yeah, 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 I'll do that. And then you don't, you're losing more and more confidence in yourself. You're losing more and more trust in yourself. And long-term it's, it's not going to help. You yeah. achieve and that's where anything. a lot of a lot of the guilt that people start feeling when things aren't going the way it's now there's something wrong with me and it's like you're you're not a bad person because you you, you haven't you're struggling with your journey right everyone struggles with the journey we're all yeah. human we make mistakes that's not a reflection on who you are as a person um but it's about building those habits i love that that analogy of your relationship with your spouse it's very similar to the relationship you have with yourself that's yeah. fantastic. What um, you talked about sustainability. What do you see works the most for people? For me, when I decided to go carnivore, it was an overnight thing. I just pew, okay, I'm now carnivore, and that's what I did, and that's it's been almost six years, and I love it. Um, a lot of people can't do that. Um, I'm very much a, uh, a to do list. I grew up with checklists. This is what you're doing. And I want it once it's checked off the box, it's done. The decision's done. made. It's happening. I'm not going back. Right. That's how I am with a lot of things. Um, I don't do many things. And I have a, I personally struggle with doing small things and building up over time. I'm very much a let's go and get it done, knock it off the list, just move on to the next thing. Um, I know not a, not a lot of people like that. So, how are you? Like your personal journey, what works best for you? Are you a jump in the pool or a one step at a time kind of person? I am an all in gal um, yeah. with basically everything in my life. Like I make really big decisions overnight and have no problem facilitating those changes and sticking to it. That's except, why we're friends. Exactly. Right. <laughs> like I went from, and this is so weird. I went from living in a boat literally five days ago, managing what it's like living in a boat. And now I'm in a house, like literally in a house. And every morning I've woken up, I'm like, how is this my life? How did we get here? There was little, <laughs> there was no transition. It was like one day we were here, whoop. next day we, whoop. so I have yeah. no problem making those changes. However, when it comes to workouts, for some mm. reason, I think because I hate working out, like it, I've heard you say that a couple I times. I hate before. it so much. Um, it's really hard for me to change my workout schedule or to motivate mm -hmm. myself with working out. So that's, mm -hmm. that is probably the only thing in my life that I have such a hard time changing. Interesting. Lately. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think you so really that have one to enjoy more, it. You have to just kind of make sure. So that was one where you focus on just maintaining the habit, whether you feel like it or not, I'm going to do it. I may not go all in like I should today, maybe tomorrow I'll hit it harder. But as long as I show up today and keep showing up, it'll get better and better. So when I started working out about two years ago, I started off with working out one day a week, then two days a week, then three days okay. a week. I knew that if I just started committing to like five days a week, I would crash and burn and it would be horrible and I would never go again. Yeah. And so that progression has been really helpful. And when I really focus on progressive overload, when I just focus on what did I do last week and how can I make just a minuscule adjustment to make it just a tiny bit harder this week, just a tiny yeah. bit harder, whether it's more weight or doing a, just half a second more on the eccentric movement, just something. Um, that's been really helpful for me. Um, yeah, but everything else in my life, I'm, I'm all, I'm all in. I think my husband is more of the slow and steady guy and I'm like the babe, let's do it. Like there's a seat sale for Paris. Do you want to go in two days? And he's like, what? Mm -hmm. I'm like, let's go. You know? <laughs> so I have no problem with those things, but yeah, the movement thing, I think because I just, I don't enjoy it. It's challenging. I'm not good at it. I don't, I yeah. don't want to do it. And yeah. with other things, I'm like, I I'm pretty good. At I think I can, I think I can manage. It'll be great. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just me personally. You just mentioned something that segues into the next question. And that is uh, you talk about your progressive overload and looking at what you did last week to what you want to do this week or this workout, whatever. In general, when it comes to fitness, nutrition, goals in your life, however that works uh, for yourself or your clients, how do you work with people on understanding the value and 
the different ways that will work for them for measuring and tracking what's going on with them. I love teaching my clients how to understand their blood work. That's mm -hmm. probably my favorite thing and going through that with them so that they're equipped moving forward. And I think that the changes that they make, like um, a woman comes to mind that was eating just a, a ton of food that she knew wasn't good for her. And um, we've worked through that over the course of about nine months. Mm -hmm. And every time we do blood work, her cholesterol is a little bit better, her glucose, her insulin, um, inflammatory markers are just a little bit better. And that encourages her quite a bit to see that progression, not only in, you know, choosing better foods and feeling better, but like seeing her cells respond to it mm -hmm. is yeah. really encouraging for some people. Other people do not care about that. And so as a coach, you need to understand like what motivates people. I think when the motivation is physical and they're like, well, you know, I'm only down two pounds this month. I really wanted to be at six, really teaching them how to look at other things that are happening is, is sometimes a challenge. Yeah. But your sleep is so much better. Like you're sleeping through the night and they say, Oh, I don't care about that. But yeah. I mean, you, you should care because of these reasons and these symptoms are going away because of this thing. And so I think it really comes down to one education and two um, tracking in a certain way. I think mm -hmm. I was never one to track my macros. I can find it to be quite triggering. And so over the last two years of, of shifting my macros, um, really learning that it's just a data point. I think for a lot of people, it becomes this emotional thing. And so I think too, teaching my clients how to take the emotion out of some of the data points is helpful. Yes. yes. Um, because it's just a data point. And I think yep. symptoms too, like it's one thing to say my sleep is bad. Okay. But if you had to rank your sleep quality every day over the next 30 days and every morning you woke up, you gave it a scale of zero to 10, Oftentimes I'll do this with my clients. We'll actually see progression on a month to month basis. You can do the same thing with macros, with your pulse, with your HRV, with your blood work, with literally everything. So you can start to see a trend, your weight too. If you jump on those digital scales now, which is so crazy, there's like an app and you can see the trend like mm -hmm. slowly, but surely it's going up, down, up, down, up, down, but the trend is generally down. And so I think those data points um, can be really can can really really help um keep you motivated um as long as you know what keeps you motivated <laughs> um, that's a that. big one and i was just I was just talking to coach nat and some other and some other people about you know uh, i'm working on my next book and i think my next book after this book is going to be about uh how to apply your why and 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 develop self awareness cuz that is the biggest thing that recently I've been running across is people, even people that I've been working with for two, three years, they still they still struggle with staying motivated and understanding that motivation isn't external. Motivation is 100%. Do you want to do it or not? And if you're not yes. mo motivated, it's because you don't want to do the thing. And if you don't want to do the thing, you've got to figure out why you don't want to do it. You wanted to do it yesterday. Why don't you want to do it today? What's going on? Where is that coming from? And a lot of and people how? don't know how to do that work to figure that out. And how often we have to remind ourselves of it on a daily basis, like multiple yes. times a day. Yes. I forget, you know, I come, I, I just did a cut um, where I, I did a bulk for like nine months eating all the things. And then I decided to do a cut and my brain just got stuck in cut mode, even though I'm in maintenance mode. And so throughout the day, I'm like, oh, well, I'll cut back. On, oh, I'll cut back. And I'm like, Leanne, stop. No, yeah. we're not in a cut anymore our goal is to eat more, like focus mm -hmm. on eating more. And I forget multiple times a day. Like, so, <laughs> so you have to just like continuously, like, what am I doing this for? What is it important? I mean, the reason I personally started working out was because my mom was recently diagnosed with Parkinson's and watching her struggle with this specifically because she didn't have enough muscle had, mm -hmm. was a huge motivator for me. Yeah. Um, as you know, most of my family has had some sort of neurological disease and uh, had many complications from it. And muscle is a huge piece of that. So my why is to be strong. So when I age, it's hopefully a little bit more graceful and I have some like, 
you know, I've put in some time with my body yeah. and making it strong. So if I do have to experience something like that, I'm prepared. And so it's not about the physical appearance. It's not about the muscle. It's not about the thing. And I, I have to repeat that multiple times a day, multiple times a day. Like when I'm doing squats today and I'm like, I could just cut it off at eight. I'm like, no, Leanne, you committed to 10. You're going to do 10, get yeah. 10 done. Just get yeah. it done. Like, so I constantly have to remind myself because we forget. I feel, yeah, I feel that for me, it's um, the challenge of being on social media as much as I am. I'm bombarded daily with the six packs and the muscles and the guys that look jacked and I'm seeing these guys and I'm like, man, I, you know, and I have to remind myself, like, I know they're not healthy. I know that's not real life. I know that's 0.5% of po the population and they live, their lives are 100% devoted to being that's in social media. That's all that is their life, their life revolves. They don't have a life outside of those pictures and their bodies are destroyed right we've been looking at blood work from a lot of um top 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 tier bodybuilders over the past couple months mm -hmm. their their hormones are so screwed it's ridiculous and having to remind myself like i know i'm in this i'm in this space and this is what's out there in social media that's not who i am that's not where i'm trying to go i'm trying to be functional i'm trying to be able to use my body till i'm 90 years old um, so I have, I have to remind myself that too. I go to the gym and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this workout because it's, uh, in my schedule. It's in my program. It's functional fitness is doing all these things. And then I'll see a thing and be like, I, maybe I'm going to squat today. It's like, no, you're not supposed no. to squat today. You're not trying to do that. You're trying to do this, you know? But it's hard as a health coach too, because in so many ways, like our bodies sell our, our product. Right. Yeah. And so if you see this like disheveled, unhealthy looking <laughs> individual, you don't want to be them, you know? Right. So there's like that layer too. And I think that's where, when you find something you're just passionate about and you share from your own experience and you're encouraged by your clients, you start to, clients start to gravitate to you that all that know your approach. And they, mm -hmm. I just, I, I love every single one of the women that I work with. I do work with men, mostly women's husbands that start working with me and they're like, can you work with my husband? But sure. you know, the women that are coming in, I mean, we start and it feels like we're best friends. Like, you know, me and I'm going to look through all your stuff and I'm going to know you really quick. And so I think too, as a health coach, get kind of getting out of that mindset of like, people aren't going to purchase my product because I have six pack abs. Yes, yes. there are individuals like that, but I don't want to revolve my life around six pack abs. I, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's not and what also to the stress, the stress of it. Right. So now I'm selling six pack ab program. I don't want that life that I have to maintain six pack abs year round. Oh, right. That sounds very stressful. <laughs> very stressful and not good for you. Yeah. Oh man. Wow. I feel like we could go forever, but um, how can people find you? I really appreciate, appreciate you being on here, Leanne. We definitely have to do it again sometime. I got to catch up. You've had me on twice. I got to get you on twice before I can come on your show again. Oh my goodness. You're welcome back anytime. It doesn't need to be a tit for tat thing. I'm totally good with any time you want to come on. Every time we have you on the show, I get messages um, just saying how great you are. So you're welcome um, anytime. Um, so you can find me um, if you listen to podcasts which I have a feeling you probably do, uh, you can go to any podcast player and search for The Keto Diet Podcast. Um, it's a show all about low-carb living and how to functionally support your body through various areas of your life, not just if it fits your macros, but so much more. And mm -hmm. then I'm on Instagram at Leanne Vogel, where I share all sorts of things. I'm trying to see how long I can grow my hair right now. And so I've been sharing a lot of hair content uh, because this is interesting. Just, okay. It's super fun and I could never grow my hair and it's literally down to my waist. So that's been really fun. Um, and then my website is healthfulpursuit.com where I share macro plans and keto programs and functional coaching and all the things. So you can find me at healthfulpursuit.com. Okay. And how many books do you have? I'm looking at Amazon right now. You have three books out? 
I have three or paperback more. books, the keto okay. diet, the keto diet cookbook and keto for women. And yep. then I have 11 digital programs for oh, wow. keto. Um, and then I have like blood work programs and root cause programs and thyroid programs. And I've been at this since 2008. So I have, I have like a lot of stuff that we yeah, update every that's... couple of years. So, okay. You've got some stuff in Portuguese. Yes. It, okay. The keto diet has been translated into like 40 different languages. That's it's fantastic. crazy. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. I get lots of images of like Korean books and Japanese and German and S Swedish and uh, yeah, so many. So I need you to, I need you to hook me up with your publisher. We need to talk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. I'll have all, all your information in the description of this video. And um, I wish you the best. Enjoy your long hair growth, your long hair growing and living in a house, not on the water. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me.